Hey everyone, it's uh, it's Bob Foster here with the artist Lou Carbone. We're here for the Upper Gallery Artist Talks, which we do previous to each exhibit that happens here in the Upper Gallery. And uh, previous uh, conversations have been with uh, notable uh, artist Frank Hanavan, uh, the late Donna O'Grady, uh, and more recently Liz and Ibu Noy. So, Lou, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Good nice good. to be here. Um, you can be listening to this uh, on the, the museum's YouTube channel, uh, and it'll also be archived. If you are registered with YouTube or uh, the other uh, platforms, you should be able to make comments, uh, which we will read. Uh, but we're really happy to do this interview just on the cusp of a, an exciting exhibit that opens uh, tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. and uh, hope to see you in person between two and five on Saturday. <laughs> and uh, Sunday is Mother's Day, so we decided to move this up a day. Generally, the openings are on Sunday, but uh, we really would like to get a lot of people here and enjoy some refreshments, maybe even sell some paintings. <laughs> that would be and uh, I'll just start off, Lou. Um, so um, tell us about the time. These are all recent paintings for the most part. So give some context. They're all done since uh, March 20. They're all done during uh, quarantine time for COVID. Um, I started to use it as a way to kill time when I couldn't be any place else. And it occurred to me um, shortly after the uh, pandemic started that I didn't need an excuse to be any place else. That, um, you know, my paintings were always the most important thing to me, but I really never put the time in um, that I could put in during the uh, quarantine just because there was no place else to be. And um, I, uh, I didn't feel that the gnawing guilt uh, that I should be trying to make rent, you know, while I was, uh, while I was painting. So uh, it was a big difference. It sort of made me look at things a different way. And, um, and I think it'll, continue. I, I've been painting like a madman, and uh, I think that's going to keep going for a while. Sure. I mean, there are 25 <clears throat> paintings in the exhibit. They're 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes your paintings have been larger mm -hmm. uh, that we've seen here. I think this is your second exhibit in the upper gallery. I keep on thinking there's three, but that's my COVID no, memory. The first one, I think, was six years ago. Okay. Okay. And uh, so we're glad to have so many here. Uh, and uh, so do you see these paintings reflect, besides being very productive, do you see them, if I look at these paintings, will I think of what's been going on the last two years? Well, as I said a little while ago, I didn't need COVID to, uh, <laughs> to uh, make uh, uh, paintings that, uh, sort of are in some way desolate and uh, sort of um, lonely. Um, but I think after COVID, it's possible that more people uh, um, see what I see when I look at, at them. Um, I don't know. They're, they're they're colorful in a way, but my palette is toned down to mostly gray and brown. I pop colors, and they give a an illusion of being colorful. I think, uh, but um, they're largely gray and brown, and uh, and uh, I always notice that my paintings are. Uh, look a little desolate, maybe a little uh, even um, uh, uh, 
surrealist in, in, in a way without a, having anything in them that is surreal. Right. Um, it, just a, a feeling, uh, I think. And these are no different. These are uh, uh, the same way. Um, so I guess you know, one of the most obvious things. Hey, there's Jerry Fallon hey, saying, Jerry. hi, Louie. Okay, I would never call you Louie. I don't know why. Is that a... It's something Jerry does. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, it's like we should say Geraldine? Uh, possibly. Okay, okay, good. Thanks for tuning Sweet. in, Jerry. And I'm sure she'll be here tomorrow <laughs> for the reception. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I think so. Good, good, good. Um, so, um, so you're, I, I guess one thing that comes up pretty quickly is that there's usually one or two people in the paintings. Are there ever any more? Sure. Oh, you mean there aren't any more? Like figures. Oh, I would have thought that there would be more. Yeah, I guess that's. I guess there are only two. Okay, just a, but these figures do not have faces. So that does make them a little surreal, but could you talk about that? And is that new or had you had you done that for a while? Geraldine will be there. Geraldine will be there. Okay, uh, no, alter but... ego. There's <laughs> Brad Johnson, future, um, I mean, sorry, past uh, interviewee who actually mentioned you in his talk with Bill last week. Thank you, Brad. We're, we're, uh, we're a little incestuous here, I think. There, or as sure. they say in Hoboken, there's no degrees of separation, separation. Mm -hmm. between the important people. <laughs> um, I did uh, uh, use uh, no face. I, it, it sticks me when people say no faces because the truth is uh, they're devoid of minutia altogether. There's no fingers. Somebody asked me, I did uh, one of these pieces has two people outside naked, and someone asked on Facebook if they were cold. And I said, how can you tell there's no nipples? So there's, you know, no fingers, no detail. No uh, detail that I have to take time to to uh, make that don't really have anything to do with the painting. I heard Frank uh, Hannibal say something like that in his talk, uh, his interview, um, where he decided to start leaving out detail. He would he would normally. Uh, paint every window in every building. And you can't know how mind-numbing that is, you know, until you do it um, and feel as though you have to do it because your, your painting's not finished unless you do it. Yeah, and, and he was shown where he has a, where he has a focal, what's it called? A, um, Just the center of interest? Or yeah. No, for, for well, perspective. For perspective. Yeah. Uh, horizon. Uh huh. Converging lines and. Now I have lots of concentric circles or uh, vertical lines. None of them have any kind of a uh, a focal point. They are they're one size, and I just put one next to the other and ignore perspective altogether. Um, and I wouldn't do it if. I noticed it. If I looked at it and said, oh, this, I fucked this, I messed this up. Um, but um, if I can get away with it, I'm just making the same line over and over and over again and forgetting about a focal point. And not because I don't like perspective. My stuff looks like it's in perspective for the most part, but I don't like the minutia that that's too much perspective that's you know too much so um so i leave a lot of stuff out not just faces there's there's no sense to me in putting faces there's a guy there with a dog behind us 
There's a guy with a dog. There's a woman with a plate. I see no point in putting eyes, nose, and mouth on them. I don't think it changes the painting at all. Um, I, you know, uh, that question's asked a lot. <laughs> I'm sure. I had to ask. So many people said, hey, ask Lou about it. No, so, I, I just I see no point in it. Interesting. So it's funny. When I look at them, I, you know, I pick up on that, and I think there must be a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, it does um, make me feel I do get a loneliness just from that, uh, mm -hmm. that there's no, you know, no faces, uh, no more. I usually get information from, you know, as we age, we get the face we deserve, they say. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, look at us, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's like all information. And I'll say, I never really noticed that there's no digits, shall we say. Right. Uh, and so I got wrapped up in the no faces. So it's, it's interesting. So I really just no, they're, noticed they're that. They're pretty pared down. Right. You know, right. if you... If you check them out, they're pretty sure. Um, and so just not pushing that too much, but like, who are these people? Where do they come from? Uh, you know, I, I don't think I can tell you that. Uh, I, I do them. I mean, my interest in them is um, positioning them so that they complement or so that they move you around the canvas. Also, I like them to be a little, just a little um, awkward, you know, maybe uh, not, I don't like, I don't like them positioned like in sports, you know, or like uh, graceful. I, I like them to be a tiny bit awkward and um, I work hard on them, but uh, uh there are specific things I use them for, and, it, and one of them is not, what's this person thinking? You know, um, I couldn't tell you. I, I enjoy it more when the person who's looking at the painting is telling me what those people are thinking, and that happens all the time. Right. So, um, so I don't really have, you know, this guy is petting his dog because his wife left him, and, you know, I don't have any of that going on. Um, I just like dogs. And <laughs> <laughs> so if someone tells you a story, what they think it is, they're kind of looking for affirmation, like, yeah, you got it, buddy. But you just kind of listen and, exactly. you know, kind of. And if I told you some, uh, you'd be shocked. Right. It's sort of like going to the psychiatrist you and looking at pictures and uh, transferring your issues <laughs> onto the painting in a way. Uh, so these people are not, the, the people in the paintings are not people you know. It's not you. It's, uh, and dogs like, like you. This is Jerry. <laughs> okay. And uh, so like, okay, the, <clears throat> since we're focused on dogs, yeah. uh, do you know, have you seen that dog? What do you base that dog on? Is it in your head or was it someone you saw in the Hoboken dog run? No, that, no. That's a, uh, behind your head is a uh, French bulldog type dog. And that's because there are a billion French bulldogs in Hoboken. You know, I see them all the time. And I guess at some point, uh, you know, it, <laughs> It, it just has to go your... on a canvas. Okay, cool. Um, up above, I just sort of like that it's streamlined. You know, it's uh, there's no painting involved at all in that. There's a highlight, and we're talking black... middle center. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, yeah. The, 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 we're right. looking at paintings that are on the wall, so you're not seeing the full figure. Yeah, we'll yeah. move into some of the full yeah, figure yeah. ones in a minute. Well, the dog is there. We're on the dog moment. And different type of dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what type. Some kind of a black lab mix, maybe. Right. With right. a pointier face. Sure. <laughs> and it's funny. In those two paintings, there's like an affection between the person and their dog. Oh, there would always right? be. Yeah. Right. 
but in most of the other paintings, we're not kind of seeing that kind of connection, maybe? I think in the ones where there are people, you do. Right, right. Yeah, um, I mean, again, without, without knowing too much about the, the uh, um, the story, the um, uh, he, I think there's um, some kind of connection between uh, the figures when they're there. I, I, I don't try to make it too, um, I don't try to, I don't have a narrative in, in mind. Right. I don't try to make it too obvious what the connection is but um ran why don't you take us to one of the slides just to give a better do shall we say and um and can you talk a little bit about process do you um uh, are you sketching things out first or yeah um i make actually tight sketches, very detailed sketches, put them on canvas, and then change everything. So I have canvas, I have uh, paintings that are, that might have three people in them, you know, for the sketch. Three people get transferred onto canvas, and then by the time I'm finished painting, there's one person. Really? Yeah. And it just looks better. Less is more kind of thing, or? Well, depending on what the painting is, sure. Yeah. So, um, so underneath that paint is uh, a sketch, in a sense? Oh, yeah. Oh, there are paintings under some of these paintings. OK. Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of that, actually. I try to not, I try not to do it with paintings that I uh, painted too boldly the first time, so that you don't get a lot of uh, uh, paint ridges from underneath. But mm -hmm. um, and I'm not against using some sandpaper here and there <laughs> to clean it up or just to <laughs> recede yeah. it more. Yeah. Um, yeah. These are very. I don't know. I mean, the thing about acrylics is um, these are tight, and Frank talked about that too. These uh, I've been tightening up uh, using acrylics, um, and sometimes it requires the kind of work that I don't like to do, like the reason that I don't do faces. Uh, it, it requires go, given a second coat just to cover the um, translucent first coat. Um, and that's the kind of stuff I could do without. Frank talks a lot about trying to do something in one stroke. And he, he said, you know, I don't have it down yet, but I'm working toward it. And um, I don't do that by any means. Um, there are no globs or blobs. He, he called them blobs on his on his paintings but they're none of those these are smooth and uh, yeah they're and they're not airbrushed but they do have a very kind of consistent feel and you're not really getting a sense of translucency of the paint right, right. and so and i'm not sure what to do about i mean i'm not sure that anything needs to be done about that but if something does need to be done I may be painting differently, you know, sometime in the future. As it stands right now, I think where I'm going is larger canvases that are this tight. Um, I'm not sure what the, the resulting, you know, what the image will be, but, um, But uh, I'm I'm not dead set against keeping the the images this tight. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, just give us a sense of your, your it's been a very productive period mm. and uh, so you're paint you're not painting in a separate studio from your living space no 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 can you give us a sense of what your day is as it connects to painting <laughs> yeah <laughs> And it's embarrassing. I, I'm living my life in bed these days. I paint in bed. I paint in bed with the television on. Um, I mentioned to you before we started this that I watched a documentary on Ebola followed by a documentary on uh, the um, um, I guess, um, something bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, oh. You did mention it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I forgot to. Well, but the idea you're, you're, you're watching media. A pandemic in uh, in uh, Quebec. Okay. Um, so I'm watching that while I'm painting these. And I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm in sheets that are that look like drop cloths that I've been, you know, sometimes wiping my brushes on and and my clothes too. I'm sleeping in paint clothes. So you're uh, you're into it deep. Yeah. And um, which you know I love. I can't. Yeah. It's, can you describe the feeling when you're painting? Well. I, it's been everything to me my whole life without actually doing the work. I mean, I actually <laughs> thought about painting. I visited places where painters came from. I always was uh, obsessed with painting and um, I wasn't doing enough of the work and now I'm doing the work. Um, and so it feels like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, you know. I mean, it's I don't I don't walk around in a you know in a, a perpetual uh, state of glee, but um, I feel like I'm doing what I should be doing now. So it feels good, you know, like a musician will describe when he's playing music. He's like in the flow. And you're kind of in that moment, shall we say, uh, when you're painting. Yeah. You're, you really enjoy it. Yeah. And a musician might have an audience. You don't really have that audience, but it is a solitary enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're doing it. Yeah. I want to make sure when I'm done that there's proof that I did something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, sure. I was here. <laughs> and what happens if you don't paint for a day? Oh, I don't paint for a day sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have things, you know, to to do that uh, life requires. Of course, of course. So, I was thinking that um, I, you know, I drive around town a lot hmm. and I drive by Empire Coffee. <laughs> I drive by Way, if I'm pronouncing Way, if I'm pronouncing it right. And where else? Yeah, I'm a coffee whore. A I, coffee uh, whore. <laughs> <laughs> I um But yeah. I will yeah. what I meant to say is that I can see you at both places, I think, in the same day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or it feels like that. For... And if I go by Empire <laughs> and I don't see you and John and Leon out there, I go, wow, I hope everyone's okay. okay. Yeah. And I usually nod and say hello, but no one, you know, you're in the moment. No one's really, you know, saying, oh, we're there's focused. Bob driving around the corner. We're focused. You are focused. And it's just, it's sort of like a, like a people landmark. For a, a long time, uh, a friend of mine, John Branch of Fort, um, posted on Facebook two pictures, one of me in front of Way, one of me in front of Empire, and they were both on Google Maps for a very long time. Um, 
I was in front of both places at the same time. So that's the like, ubiquitous. Yeah, that's mind. like like a digital, you know, bonanza. Yeah. Uh, the, and so that means the Google <laughs> truck was around photographing. It could have been different days, but when they put it together, it's it's not like I've time sensitive. I've seen it sensitive. a bunch of times. You've seen the truck, <laughs> right? So, so you see it go by, and then you go, "I'm going uptown <laughs> <laughs> to be captured." That's pretty cool, mm. and so that's obviously social, and it's also the beverage. Yeah, sure. I live for the beverage. Yeah, sure. Well, you know what? I live for the social too. I would think. Uh, yeah. Coffee shop is um, is a big part of my social life these mm -hmm. days. And so during like heavier quarantine times, would you skip the coffee shop? Uh, yes. Yeah. And you know what? I forgot all about it. People say to me, oh, you didn't come here for a whole year, you know, and it didn't occur to me. I mean, I was working on paintings. Right. At the time. Where you said, go check Google Maps. I was there. Right. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, and I was drinking the coffee at home, which sort of has to be inf instant because I can't drink a whole pot at a time. Um, so I have to make them one cup at a time, and I use instant coffee. Which instant sucks. coffee? Yeah. Oh, it's awful. horrible. It's awful. Um, so what is your coffee drink of choice? Getting off a painting for a moment when you go to one of the I coffee shops. I just drink shops. coffee with uh, cream in it. So you're no not sugar. going for fancy stuff. No, no, it's no. Not, uh, no. Latte. It's not latte. No cortados for me. Americano or whatever. Yeah, no. Just your house blend. Mm-hmm. Yep. Excellent, excellent. Here's Paul Nishampkin. Lou, I wish I was back in Hoboken to <laughs> share a cup uh, with you at Way. Paul, I think, still has a place across the street. Uh, of course, it would be Tico from Anthony Davis. Well, we'd have to meet at Bway after the Tico was finished. What's Tico? I don't even know. Well, it's got to be what Anthony David serves. Oh, okay. And that's like the brand a, name? or A friend of mine, uh, Steve, um, buys his coffee at Anthony David and brings it up to Bway to sit. Really? Oh, boy, yeah. Is that that's sort of like uh, getting food delivered uh, yeah, from another mind. restaurant? They don't mind that. Okay. You keep it in a neutral container, so it's not associated. I think he has. I, think he I don't has. think Abby would like that. No, 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 that's true. No, that's true. Abby, <laughs> I know, I know. You do it where you can get away with it, I guess. <laughs> but no, not Abby. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, so... And uh, any other, you mentioned two coffee shops. Is there any more that you frequent? No, no. I mean, if I'm, I had a studio at Newman, so I used to drink a lot of coffee at the Dunkin' Donuts across the street, but. Um, Which no. is better than you think, right? It's consistent. Right, right. I drove my car to California, to cross country and down and back to the south. And um, and drank uh, Dunkin' Donuts coffee the whole time, and you can't tell the difference, no matter where That's you the are. the corporate consistency, I yeah, guess, right? Following the recipe. Good. I was stopping for um, ice cream sandwiches and coffee okay. and, and gas. <laughs> So Did there, were, if there was a Dunkin' Donuts at the gas station and an ice cream bar. You were kind of all set. Right. One I drove, stop shopping. I drove back from Santa Fe in one shot without sleep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 2,000 miles. It's crazy. Yeah. Could it's you crazy. do it now? I don't think so. No. Yeah. It's like there's a time and a place. Yeah. When you're young, you can do and that. And when stuff. I got to Hoboken, I went to. Um, uh, Mola. Mola was the coffee shop on Washington between 5th and 6th. I remember the name. I just can't see it. But the time was such that I thought maybe some people were hanging around. So I went to Mola after driving for 2,000 miles. Wow. Right. Um, so is so Hoboken is good for, painting, for a painter like you? Sure. You're set up, right? Hoboken's great. You know, it's a, it's a, it's 
it's a fun place to live. It, it's convenient place to live. I guess more than anything else, it's convenient. It's um, you have a built-in social life just walking on the streets. It's got dogs and kids. I'm not so crazy about that. It's turned into a, you know. A, as much of a family. I, sure. I, I liked uh, I liked Hoboken uh, when I first came here. Right. I uh, like it now too, but it, it was really a special place. So, uh, you know, you were an artist when you first came to Hoboken. Yeah, right? and I wouldn't feel the same way if I wasn't an artist, by the way. You know, I, uh, Hoboken was made for artists in the 80s. You know, it was... Uh, it was a different atmosphere altogether. Um, so can you be more specific? I don't know that I can. I mean, there was a music scene. There was uh, an art scene. It's always hard for, um, for an art scene because you're only nine minutes on the path from the biggest art scene in the world. So... Um, it was never a time when you would come here instead of New York for your, you know, art needs. But, um, you know, it was uh, uh, another borough, you know, put you closer. Couldn't get any closer, really. There are places in every other borough that would take you longer to get to Midtown than, than it took me on the path. And that's still true. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing. But 40 um, years ago, um, did you th did you think Hoboken would turn into what it is now? Yeah. No. I, I didn't think I'd still be here 40 years later. Right. Um, you know, the, that decision's been made like 30 times. <laughs> do I get out? Do I, you know, go someplace quieter? And I never would have thought of someplace quieter then. It's now, you know, now sure. things are changing quick. Right. When you went out to Santa Fe, was that to possibly relocate or? You're, no, no, Santa Fe was one of 20 stops on that trip. I went to the Badlands. I went to uh, Rushmore. I went to the Black Hills. I went to... Uh, uh, um, uh, I don't know, a bunch of places. Yeah, right. Um, so back to painting world. Uh, maybe we could just look at another painting from the series uh, on there. Cool. Okay. Hmm. Um, so kind of interested, like you sketch it out and then tell me about your color decisions. This painting, first of all, um, I worked on this three days ago. And it's here in the exhibit and dry. Well, yeah, it wasn't it wouldn't be dry when I was using oils, but right. it, it's dry. The acrylics dry really fast. Yeah, I um I changed a bunch of things on this painting. Uh he was fifty pounds fatter. I I took weight off him. Uh I changed the background, that building behind him. Um, I had a reputation with my friends uh, years ago of hanging the show and then going the next day to work on it uh, after it was already hung. I'll bet you're glad I'm not doing that. I'm going to say, we didn't give you the key. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I used to do that, and I used to do it with oils, and the place would stink, and, you know, but uh, I would um, be too close to it while I was working on it, and then see it on the wall and decide that it needed to be changed. Um, so I don't do that as much anymore, <laughs> but, but uh, it's funny that this it was the painting that came up, because I, I just worked on it. And... So I'm going to push you a little. What it what could be a narrative of this painting? I mean, 
yes, you like the design of it, you like the foreground, the background, the graphic qualities, but anything else you can uh, help us with? Well, it. I'm not sure. It's, it's an industrial, I'm crazy about industrial landscape. Um, there's that. I have um, recently been um, introduced to and know uh, a couple of architects in town. Um, and I may have been thinking about that. Uh, I had a, a painting that fell behind the bar at Maxwell's and they just recently tore Maxwell's up, you know, uh, redid it. And um, uh, the construction crew that was there, I'm, I'm, I'm so embarrassed because I'm not going to, I'm nervous now and I'm not going to remember his name, but um, the architect whose builders were working on Maxwell's um, saved the painting for me. Um, was, it, was it signed and that was the Yeah, attribution? yeah, yeah. It was in a show uh, <laughs> over the bar at Maxwell's and it got hot and I had it stuck up with um, duct tape and uh, not, not duct tape to the wall, but duct tape to the hook and the hook on a nail, but the duct tape, it got to be 90 degrees or something, and the duct tape just melted and the painting fell behind the uh, the wall. And it was a small painting, it was this size. Um, so Nastasi, John Nastasi kept it for me. Um, so I, I met him, you know, one of the architects in town and uh, uh, I also um, Van der Van der Van der Mark, uh, Anthony. Uh, I sold him a, a painting. Um, uh, another architect. Another architect. So I, it's possible that I had that in my head when I was doing these things. Sure. Sort of um, tribute. Uh huh. That's that's pretty interesting. I think. <clears throat> And uh, this one's 21, so it's a little... So uh, you started in 21? Yeah, Cause you said, I didn't change the, yeah, I didn't sorry. Cha <laughs> <laughs> I didn't change the uh, signature. The day, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that was phase one, right? <laughs> um, so of course, I tend to be a little Hoboken-centric. So I just, I just figured like you had done uh, you had a studio space in Newman Leather for a while, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking this is the architect that's going to convert uh, Newman Leather into its next phase. It may be and I think John Nastasi is involved yeah. in that, so a little overlap. So mm -hmm. we all try to make up a story, whether mm -hmm. it's true or not, but it helps, um, you know, attach us to the painting, I think. Mm -hmm. So interesting, interesting. Um, and the color, did you kind of know that was just going to pop, putting in the yellow in there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, I needed a, I needed a place for your eye to go. Right. You know? And the and red triangle does that, too, I think, in the water tower. Yeah, that's what I um, meant when I said a pop color into that. That painting's gray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? And uh, and I just pop color here and there and try to play... Uh, you know, colors against either wide open spaces or or things that are together tightly. Uh, maybe you can balance uh, those buildings together against the red, you know, on the other side of the canvas or uh, or sometimes just complementary colors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, there's green in that yellow. Right. And I was trying to, I'm not sure the photograph, reads enough of the green. 
because I think the green plays against the red a little bit in that uh, in that water tower. Right, right. I do, yeah, I apologize for the glare. I yeah. just took a few pictures yeah, yeah. <laughs> earlier today with the cell no, phone. No, but I know that was a consideration, the green and the red against each other. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like a straight ye yellow and a, and a red. Gotcha, gotcha. And this kind of weird question, like how do you know you're done? And do you ever like go too far and have to pull back and redo? Or I can't answer a question that weird. Right. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, you you stop. You know you you get to where you're comfortable and you stop, and that doesn't mean anything. I could take that home right now, and work for two days on it. You know, I mean it's done. But just because I said it was done, you know? Um, so, yeah, and this painting, I get, was it started in 21? And then you've been yeah. adding to it, shall we say, pretty recently, from well, the way you described? Well, or, I, I, I haven't been adding to it. I did it in 21. I looked at it in uh, anticipation of bringing it here. Right. And I thought, well, no, I got to change some things on it. Right. You know, I did it with other things here, mm -hmm. by the way. Sure. Um, and so if someone said this figure is you, that's kind of not really. Well, I mean, they're all, they're all autobiographical. Uh huh. Not because I'm an architect, but um, the things in the painting I like, the arches i have so many arches in the in this batch mm -hmm. and that's got something who knows what to do with ancient rome and you know uh i don't know it's an italian thing <laughs> the aqueducts and the, yeah it's yeah. just you know it's a great thing it's a great I, shape i mean it's a great frame there are a million round wooden tables in my mm -hmm. paintings. There are, there are things right. that I just don't fight. Uh, I don't think, well, I'll do one and I'll have a round table and I'll sure. have arches, but I, I don't fight them, uh, um, fight against them. Right. And here's Bill Curran. All right. And do you want to give a shout out to Bill for hanging the exhibit? Yes, thank you so much. It looks great. Okay, Bill, did you just sign on? Well, there'll be a delay. Sorry. Uh, can you? So Bill's asking, can you explain your process? You have a dream, then make a composition, and then what's the meaning? This I sounds have, a little familiar, but I haven't ha I haven't remembered a dream since I was a child. <laughs> I don't remember dreams. I don't rely on inspiration. Um, Jesus, uh, you know, composition, I think composition and, um, uh, color, uh, I, I think the color in them is important, even though it's, uh, even though it's, um, these are not as colorful as work that I used to do when I worked in oils. Um, but I really like the um, play in the color against the muted areas. Um, I like it. Uh, so it's, uh, I don't know, maybe they're, they're too formal. They're, uh, they have to do with composition. They have to do with um, uh, color, an interest in color. They have moving you around the canvas. Um, they have to do with simplifying everything. Um, also, what you said about just so almost the awkwardness of the people, I mm -hmm. think, is interesting. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, whether it's an individual, they're not walking super gracefully. You know, the person carrying the suitcase, you know, is almost like 
push, pulling them down. Mm. You know, the weight of that case is heavy. <laughs> you know, look at the arms, you know, or uh, it sort of pulls, pulls them off their gravity a little bit. And I find that kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm more likely to have someone standing with their legs completely straight than to try to make some kind of graceful, mm -hmm. statuesque pose. Um, and, um, and that's part of what I'm what I'm doing. That's part of the process. And I think it's, uh, I think that, that it's not the first thing every painter would do uh, makes it appealing to me. And um, your figures, have they changed over time? They have. I used to paint all fat guys. All fat people. I, I kind of remember that. Yeah. And I just figured... They're sort of autobiographical, and I thought you lost a lot of weight, <laughs> <laughs> and you might. I've be... lost it and put it back on. And okay. Lost it and well, put it COVID back on. makes us eat more, but no, I, now I'm down. Now you're <laughs> down. Okay. Well, I always, you know, I'm, you know, we're just talking, but I always thought, I think those those people are are a little fitter, and I think Blue shed some weight. So, but I still was... like fat people. I uh -huh. still, you know, I have sketches with fat people in them. I'm working on a couple of paintings with fat people. In it. It's probably more fun to paint a fat person than a it could buff be. person, right? It could you be, get the yeah. rolls and the curves <laughs> and things like that. So it's pretty interesting. Okay. Um, so some thoughts. All right. I should tell you that a lot of this stuff has like signage. But it never ever has anything that actually spells anything that you can make out. People ask me if this says oil, and it could, but I didn't do it to say oil, and and I didn't think of it ahead of time. Uh, like the words I use, generally speaking, are thought of when I need to use them. Um, there, there's no uh, pre-thought about what the word is going to be. I, I'm using the type, and it. Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, so you know Stephen. Yeah. Should I just read his uh, piece here? Great interview. I really appreciate your candor, Lou. At what age do you, do you know you are a painter? And what's the first painting you remember crafting? And there's a lot of paintings. Well, um, I was the best artist in my kindergarten class. <laughs> really was. Um, and um, so I knew early on. And the first painting, because I used to draw and, you know, all that stuff. But the first painting was um, in college at... Um, um, at uh, School of Visual Arts. Um, I was right out of high school. Um, and it was me as a ship captain. Don't ask, because I don't know why. I don't know what was in my head. It was in acrylic and it was me in a blue blazer at the wheel of a ship and I was 19 or something <laughs> is that painting still around oh yeah yeah it's in my storage space so yeah tell me about the storage space is it all paintings it's mostly paintings. Mostly paintings. I mean, when I went down to 16 by 20, I had, you know, five by seven foot canvases around my studio. Right. So with the help of uh, Tim Daly, I sold a bunch of those, some of them, stored others of those at uh, Newman. Mm -hmm. 
and then got a storage space for what was left. Right. Because right. there's no room where I live. Now. Uh huh. Um, where I live is a kitchen at kitchenette, a bed, a bathroom, and a, and a, an easel. So. And the reason I paint in bed instead of the easel is so I'm lazy. And it's easier to watch the media stuff. That's right, right? right. I know all about Ebola now. So do you watch on a laptop or you've... No, TV. You know, the TV. Yeah. Okay, which Roku. is up on the Roku. wall. Roku. Roku, of course. Huh. I just... I, it's interesting that you can paint so easily with the program on, shall we say. Uh, right. I, I'm not saying I really know what's going on in the program. Okay, okay. I sometimes watch movies and think, wait a minute, I watch this thing. Right, but you keep the volume on? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. interesting. I don't uh, think I could focus on that. Here's Brad again. To follow up on your very first painting, if tomorrow was the end of everything, what would be the last <laughs> thing you would paint? Wow, we're going dark here. You, you and the, the three kids, Brad. Yes. <laughs> That'd be a cool painting. Um, thanks, adorable. Brad. Yeah. Um, um, so, and I'm going to say during COVID, did you have any kind of crisis? Like, this is the end. I'm going to get sick. And every you know, minute. Every minute. Again, I didn't need COVID for that. Right. You know, I've, I'm on antidepressants for 17 years now. Okay. Maybe more, maybe 18 years. Mm hmm. Um, so I didn't need COVID to, you know, today was a rainy day and I was against being alive <laughs> because it was rainy. Okay. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't need any help to, you know. So does painting kind of relieve some of those, uh, some of that darkness? It may, I can get lost in it. You know, it's one of the few things I can get lost in. Um, yeah, maybe. I've been trying meditation lately. Uh huh. I don't mean just lately. I've been doing it my whole, whole life, but I never really got the knack. But painting is probably one of the best. Uh, I don't know what I say. I think meditation. Meditation too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, these all required decisions. You know, every. You know where all these things go, and mm -hmm. yeah, you can get lost in it pretty mm -hmm. easily. Right. Um, let's go on for a few more paintings. Aha. Uh -huh. hmm. I don't really know. I mean, this one maybe more than most. Um, I don't really have an excuse for. It. <laughs> I like the uh, figure. You know, I like the way he's laid out. Um, I don't have any idea about what's on that piece of paper or, you know, I like the plant. I did the plant separately from the person. I did the plant in a notebook and um, and I liked it. And I wanted to use it, so I kept it around. And then I put it in here. I mean, I immediately get a story going on it, but you're you're dealing with a more informal relationships right. of like the that. color and the shape and proximity and to the plant and yeah, like the like the big exciting thing about the plant to me was that it brings you back to him. You know, it sure. brings your eye back to him. Right. And right. Um, that's really what I'm trying to do is get your eye around. Mm -hmm. Melinda. Melinda Messick. <laughs> Love the story about Maxwell's. When and why did you switch from oils to acrylics? Good question. How did that change the colors you gravitate towards? Thank you, sweetie. Um, I changed when it was clear that oils were going to kill me because I've got uh, bronchial 
issues, which you can actually hear in my voice right now. I mean, I could hear it in my voice right now. Um, uh, bronchial issues that required that I stopped working uh, with oil paints and started to use uh, acrylics. And as far as the colors are concerned, um, acrylics are more opaque generally than uh, oils and um, uh, and the look is different. The um, you can see through oils more easily than uh, acrylics uh, generally. Not everything, like zinc white acrylic, you could paint all day and have to keep painting over it to get it to be actual white. That's why it's necessary to use uh, titanium white. But um, but most of the time, you're um, you've got a more opaque look to the uh, acrylics, and in my case. Uh, I um, I got tighter as a result. I used to use, when I used oils, I used to use chip brushes, little dollar chip brushes and rags to paint with for the most part. Um, and now I use a number one brush, a little number one brush. <laughs> so number Thanks one, for the question. Yeah, number one's pretty fine, right? Tiny. Tiny. It's tiny. Wow. That's how I placed so this Bill Curran, last. who hung the show, did a great job. Lou, I placed this painting last in the show. It reminded me of all the work you have done. Sure, because it's a skinny me. There you uh, go. Exhausted. He's been moving that brush. <laughs> exhausted at the end of the, the pandemic. That's right. But there's no paint on your outfit here. No, that's right. <laughs> but that couch was blue see before i started okay cool and uh we'll uh we have a few more minutes so we'll we'll discuss these a little quicker um and this one is interesting um i paint work a lot uh -huh. i always worked always you know i was a painter a house painter and i was a uh Mason's assistant, and um, uh, I was a laborer, and I loaded trucks for UPS, and I always had to work, and it's uh, it's one of my subjects. I like to paint people working. I like it much better than actually working. <laughs> It's kind of a nice uh, transference mm -hmm. there. Um, I also, I'm just commenting, I love how you do the fabric, the tension and the shadowing. And I, you must really enjoy I do. transferring that. That's the kind of stuff you can get lost in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, and we'll go on to the next. This is UPS, right? No, I'm just kidding. Well, no. sure, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really is. At Montauk, no. <laughs> um, and and there's an example of, you know, him being awkward, you know, straight-legged and awkward. Right. It's not that it's not, um, um, what the fuck, what's the word? Um, it, there's an elegance to it. It's not uh, awkward. Like uh, he looks like he's deformed or anything. It's just uh, what yeah. I would consider an awkward. Right, but his body language, com you know, complements the stacking in the boxes mm -hmm. and the background and the angles of the, uh, you know, geography yeah. and so on. So you you see that you've really balanced it out. And worked hard to do that, I think. So, again, 
I couldn't tell you. <laughs> so since it's, well, since we called it COVID, which may not, right. yeah, talk about that. Somehow I got a little mixed up on the title for the exhibit. I titled and the exhibit. Uh, uh, pandemic? Quarantine. 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 I don't know. I just and I guess the there email. was a glitch at the printers, and I wasn't available for to approve the proofs from the printer, and it came out as COVID. The well, Lou, uh, Lou's title. being kind. I was just juggling too much, and I said this ship's got yeah. sail, and so whatever. Yeah. But you never would consider putting like masking these people or anything like no. that. That's just too. It would be just be just too, too much, uh, sophomoric or well, whatever. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah. just I, I, I don't want to be that. You know, these things are a, an implied narrative. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something going on. Right. Not that I have to know what it is, but there's an implied narrative. I don't want it to be. I don't want to start doing signage, you know, for this month's uh, um, uh, kind of flavor of the month flavor kind of, of month. thing. Yeah. So I got it. I don't want to do the math. Sure. Sure. And do any of these figures have a coffee cup in their hand? Uh, it's funny. I was drawing a coffee cup on a canvas before I came here. Um, there may be. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I see wine. I see And I don't produce. drink wine, by the way. Okay. I like the idea of wine. We'll, we'll get a coffee tomorrow then. No, no <laughs> yeah. wine. Okay. And uh, let's see. Yeah, Maybe just... there's two or three more we should probably go through. I love the fabric, the way you've handled that. Thank you know, you. the tension and... Uh, yeah, and this was sort of, you see the light over his head. That got a little more narrative than I like okay. it to be because he looks like he's being interrogated. Exactly. And that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. So at least we don't know what he was being interrogated about. Yes, exactly. I'm always going to do um, cafes. Uh-huh. I have a, like a corny Montmartre uh, connection to cafes you love those awnings i love the awnings yeah which you know it's funny but seeing these things up um i've done a very similar awning a few times i've got to stop that right i you think know, uh bill kind of arranged them with that type of similarity going <laughs> on he saw different patterns and colors and mm -hmm. motifs uh, on there and it is fun to see them all together because there, there's a lot of movement going on when you see them. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good-looking uh, room. Kind yeah. of a flip book there. You know, they have movement. And uh, now this, talk about a narrative. Um, I almost didn't bring it. Just because... Um, I, I wanted to change some things. I, I wanted to get rid of that nuclear green suit. Uh huh. Um, I wanted to maybe take some stuff off the table. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe bring the shadows of the table down over the area where the signature is. Uh huh. Just to s simplify the image a little bit. Uh, because I think with too much going on, it starts to get a cartoony look to it. Right. Um, but, but that I'm bowl okay. is the center of interest, mm -hmm. you know, just from that shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where and, my eye goes. And the nuclear green doesn't. The nuclear away. green doesn't take any Toxic away. waste avenger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pea soup. Yes. Yeah, you see what I mean about the um, the floorboards? They're all the same size. That wouldn't be that wouldn't look like that if it was in perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had a horizon line and a focal point, that's a, an awkward way to do that floor. But I, it doesn't make me want to stop. 
but there is such a balance from all the shapes. At first it seems awkward, but then it seems like you're really trying to get, you know, relationships going and that's fun. It's fun. Right. Thank you. Okay. We are at the end of the run here. We're going to do a few credits. So the name of the exhibit is COVID Recent <laughs> Paintings by Lou Carbone, which is true. They are recent. recent. And uh, it's here in the upper gallery, May 7th. This is the third exhibit of 2022 for us. Mm -hmm. So they'll have a hard time saying 2022. And it runs until July 3rd. So at least six weeks, probably a little bit longer. Uh, you see the hours were open every day except for Monday. And uh, come check out the paintings. And then we, obviously, this was a special presentation to uh, tease people to come to tomorrow's reception. Mm -hmm. And this will be archived. Uh, you can also watch it while you paint. And you can put it on closed caption if the sound interferes with your concentration and the kevin did a great job i think designing the card for this huh. and uh so and the the, he did the poster yeah but kevin's our yeah, guy it's great job yeah he he loves uh design and had good sources obviously and uh always does things quickly too so we're lucky to have mckevin with us for Gosh, over 25 years, wow. I would say. Yeah, yeah. So we have a few more thank yous, I believe. Uh, the exhibit is sponsored by Hudson County Office of Cultural Heritage Affairs. Uh, Tom DeGis is our county executive and the Office of Cultural Affairs uh, has a great crew and we appreciate uh, the money that is used to support the exhibit. And uh, we also encourage you to visit uh, downstairs, our main floor exhibit, the history of Washington Street called The Avenue, which will still be up for a while. And everyone knows Washington Street and uh, a lot of coffee shops on Washington Street. <laughs> uh, and in fact, we have a coffee festival coming up uh, next Sunday. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So you should check it out. Oh we'll, we'll set you up at a table and you can do a little tasting competition uh, so we'd love people to come to that and uh, we do have a category of supporters called the shipyard circle these are all folks who help uh, support the museum monetarily uh, if there's an asterisk it means they're uh, trustees so we thank the trustees for guiding us through mm -hmm. tough times which we've been in and uh, uh, the Hoboken Talks, which is our Thursday night program, uh, we have a surprise coming up, uh, coming soon a surprise. And after that, we'll have Michael Hill interviewed by uh, Jack yeah, Silver. A great Jack And Silver. Jack does a great job. Uh, we change our interview folks, I mean, sorry, our hosters uh, to spread out the good, good times. And want to thank <laughs> Rand Hoppe for engineering the Thank program you, and uh, uh, recognizing that he's here under slight health duress and uh, hope it's not COVID, but he, you may have heard a cough in the background and we can't say it wasn't happening, but uh, the show goes on and Rand is gonna get some sleep after this. Uh, and again, we'd love you to get the word out about this program and uh, share and subscribe and comment on YouTube, which is our main platform. But of course, we want to see your eyeballs tomorrow at the reception from two to five. And you can hang out with Lou, not at a coffee bar, but here at the museum. I'll have coffee. He'll, he'll have coffee. Coffee and a mask. Okay, there you go. And a straw. <laughs> so signing off. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> have a good rest of the Friday evening and a good weekend. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Lou.